Hey, what's going on guys, Stigma here, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make the effect you have just seen on screen. Now, before we get into the video, just like to remind you guys, about 50% of the people that are watching this video right now are actually subscribed, so it would really mean a lot to me if you want to go ahead and do that, as well as the like button while you're down there, because, you know, why not? And, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Alright, I'm going to be starting off by uh, showing you guys the After Effects version, and then I'm going to go ahead and head over to Vegas Pro. So, for After Effects, what I've gone and done here is, if I just show you guys the keyframes, I've gone and set up my Twixter. And this above here is the Roto Brush. Now, you will need to Roto Brush the character for, you know, the remainder of the slow-mo. So, essentially, what I've gone is I've just gone the, uh, the speed at, you know, 100% here, and it goes down to 20 uh, when the gun is being pulled out. And then it goes up here to 341 or whatever it is. And then it just, you know, uh, ends. So uh, once we've done the rotor brush, we can actually go ahead and start with the tutorial. So the first thing I need to do is just add an adjustment layer, just like that. Drag that down here uh, and just go ahead and split that here. So you want to split that at the start and at the end of the rotor brush. Then go ahead and go into effects and presets and search for half tone, should be in the BCC plugin. Go and drag that on there and set the brightness to 25%. Now, what this should do is it should add this sort of background to, you know, the character. Obviously, my rotor brush isn't entirely perfect. I didn't really have time to make it, you know, 100% flawless. Uh, but it should look something like that. Now, what you need to do is you need to duplicate uh, the uh, the rotor brush by just pressing Control D. And then you need to go to the, uh, the bottom one right here. Go ahead and go into your effects and presets tab and search for fill. Go ahead and drag that on to the bottom one. Go ahead and set the color to yellow. Go ahead and click OK. Now go ahead and search for deep glow. Uh, the normal glow works as well, but I would recommend the deep glow because it is just slightly better. Go ahead and drag that on there and set the mode to screen. Uh, now it should look something like that. Uh, essentially, what you want to do now is just go ahead and duplicate this top track as well. Just duplicate that and set that to screen without adding anything else. Now, what you want to do is just download the overlay that is in the description. Let me just go ahead and pull it up here on my second monitor so I can actually import it. Uh, but you do need to go ahead and download that. Uh, once you've gotten that, just go ahead and import it into After Effects by just dragging it in just like so. And uh, what you want to do is you sort of want to just make sure that it's roughly the same length. You don't want it to be the exact same length, obviously, but it needs to be something, you know, similar. You don't want it to be too short or too long. You can just go and time stretch that to fit your needs. Uh, now we go ahead and head over to mode, select screen. Uh, and what you want to do is you just want to set the, uh, you, go, you go into transform settings and you go to scale. You set this like 60%, I would say. And then you just go ahead and move this down just like so and I would recommend that you just go you know towards the end and just make sure that uh, the overlay actually you know goes down so we want it to be sort of like that I would say I would say that's a good it's a good sort of reference and if we go up it should be something like that a bit more to the right and now you should be good to go with your overlay uh, now, there are a couple things you're going to want to do. So firstly, you're going to go ahead and make a new adjustment layer. And this is going to be for your radial blur. So what you want to do here is you just want to go like a bit back. So like here to where they pull out the shotgun. Just go ahead and do that and just go ahead and split the uh, the adjustment layer once the, uh, the rotoscope is over. So once these layers are over as well. Uh, now go into effects and presets tab, search for CC radial blur. Uh, just go ahead and drag that onto the adjustment layer. And go ahead and keyframe the amount to zero at the start. Go ahead and go to where the uh, the effect kicks in, set this to 15. Uh, and then just go ahead and go forward a bit and set it to zero once again. Go ahead and set the quality to 100 because it is just better that way. And what you want to do now is essentially just make sure that it looks all right. You can go ahead and easy ease these. It's not really required, but you might as well. Um, and now what you want to do is just go ahead and go into your effects and presets tab and search for blur mode curves. Just go ahead and drag that onto the adjustment layer. Go ahead and keyframe the Z distance on the, uh, the first frame. Go ahead and go in here and then drag the Z distance in until you can't really see the black edges anymore. So that should be roughly 0 0.9. 
then just go and go to the end go ahead and set that to one go ahead and uh, easy ease these keyframes right here go and open your graph editor and just go ahead and uh, open value graph just go ahead and uh, just do that just do sort of like that then drag that all the way back you want this to be you want it to be sort of smooth towards the end, but you also want it to be sort of like you want it to be sort of like this. Uh, you, you want the uh, the zoom in to be very powerful and you know be there in time, but you also want the actual fade out to be smooth as well. Uh, now, what you want to do is just go ahead and go into your effects and presets tab and search for lens blur. So just go and drag the uh, lens blur OBS onto this. Just go ahead and set the gamma to like four hundred and the iris scale to like five. Just go ahead and keyframe the iris scale here. Uh, just go ahead and make sure that there is some blur on the actual uh, rotation here. Uh, obviously it shouldn't be too much, but you do want there to be some. So you can also go ahead and just add some random blurs uh, on the actual effect, just like that because it does tend to look quite good. Uh, if you do it correctly anyway. Uh, so, but just make sure to not overdo it because if you do overdo it, it won't look great uh, whatsoever. Now what you want to go ahead and do is just open your effects and presets tab. Uh, after you've made an adjustment layer, of course, make sure to make an adjustment layer. Go ahead and make the adjustment layer start sort of like a bit before the actual uh, blur. And then just go and have it end there. Uh, now, once you're in here, just go ahead and search for blur mode curves. And now what we want to do is just drag that onto there. And now we just want to keyframe the Z distance at the start. Uh, we just set it to one sort of like there. And you want to go to sort of here, roughly. Uh, just set this to 0, 0,9. Uh, and once you've done that, just go ahead and go to like here. Set, it, set the Z distance like 0, 0,75. Make sure that the centering is, you know, not in the exact center. You want to be sort of towards the side of the character, sort of like there. And then at the end, you want the Z distance to be like 0, 0,95. Uh, after you've done that, just go ahead and easy ease all of these. And then just go and play around with the graph editor. Uh, now, what you want to do right here is you drag both of these out. Drag that in. Uh, drag the other side out there as well. Just go ahead and do something like that. You want this to be sort of an S curve and you want it to look sort of like this. Uh, now, after you've done that, you should be good to go. Essentially, there are a couple more things you can add, like, you know, flicker and whatever. Uh, so I can just go and do that. Just drag default flicker onto it. And that's essentially it really. Uh, but yeah, after you've done that, you should be done with the effect. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to the Vegas Pro version. All right, I'm now going to show you how you can attempt to recreate this effect in Vegas. Now, obviously, it is going to be a lot harder on Vegas than it is going to be on After Effects. On After Effects, it is actually relatively easy. Uh, but on Vegas, it is just not going to be that easy. Now, uh, as you can see here, I've just gone ahead and imported the roller brush. This layer is essentially just the same as if I were to have masked out the character. Uh, so don't worry about that. And this is essentially just the bottom layer. I've already added the Twixter, of course, uh, and rendered it out so that I can actually start adding presets to this. Now, if you don't know how to do that, you just actually make the Twixter that you want. Just have it slow down and then just speed up and you have the impact. And then with just the Twixter, you render the clip out. And then you import it back into Vegas and now you can add uh, another effect. All right, now once you have everything masked down, ready to go in Vegas, I uh, just gotta talk to you guys a bit about the limitations that actually come here. So first of all, the sort of radial thing or the blur thing at the start, as far as I know, it's not possible because the way radial blur works in Vegas is that the blur just sort of shoots out from one central point. Uh, which is why they call it radio blur, but in a uh, CC radio blur and after effects, what actually happens is it goes in an actual circle. So as far as I'm aware, it is actually not possible to recreate that, but I will show you how to sort of do everything else really. Uh, so yeah, it, it's still sort of possible. 
So what we want to do now is just split the clip right underneath these and then just go ahead and split it right there. Now go ahead and search for halftone right here, BCC halftone. Uh, I don't know why that didn't work. Just go ahead and drag that on to the bottom right here. Go ahead and set the brightness to 25. Just like that, it should look like this. Uh, now, what you want to do is go ahead and duplicate this uh, mask that you have made right here. Obviously, for me, it is an, uh, a rotoscope that I've imported, but for you guys, it'll probably be a mask around the character. It can also be a, a sort of, I guess you can make it like a, a circle mask, but I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, but yeah, once what you want to do here is just go to the bottom track that we have right here, search for glow, as underscore glow. We obviously don't have deep glow in Vegas, so that sort of sucks. Just go ahead and add glow, set the color to, uh, just set the color to a nice little yellow, just like that. And now what we want to do is just go ahead and make a new video track up here. Just go ahead and drag that up there. Then go ahead and make two copies of this so that it actually becomes a bit more, uh, you know, sort of like that. So now what we want to do, obviously ignore all the masking errors that I've had here. Is just go ahead and insert a new video track and uh, just go ahead and download the overlay that is in the description. Uh, it's called character overlay and if I just go ahead and drag it in just like that, it should look like that. Uh, so now once you have it imported, just go ahead and go to compositing mode and set it to screen. And now what we want to do is just open our cropping tool and just sort of drag it down to the character. Now it should be something like that. Just go and play around with it to get the dimensions right and everything like that. Make sure to not keyframe by accident as well. Uh, but just make sure that it looks so it should look sort of like that. I'd say that looks pretty good. I would just sort of drag it up a bit though. Uh, and after we've done that, it should look all right. So if we go ahead and just pre-render this, it should look sort of like this. Uh, now, you're going to have to find a way to actually sort of transition from the nothing into the entire thing here. Obviously, the radial thing doesn't work. You can go ahead and like do, do like a shake or like a beat shake or something like that. Uh, I'm just not even going to bother with that because the, the method that I have prepared just doesn't work. So, um, yeah, anyway, once we've done that, I'm just going to go ahead and drag an impact onto the last frame right here so if we just go ahead and uh, drag the impact on here and go ahead and pre-render it uh, right now you should have something like that uh, now obviously you know it still doesn't look amazing so <laughs> what we want to do is we want to render all of this out so just go ahead and select everything and just file render as and just go ahead and render literally everything out now we are doing this so that we can actually add the blur mo curves sort of zoom in. So 0531 tutorial, just like that. And uh, just come render it out. And what, why we're doing this essentially is to be able to add the blur mo curves to the actual, uh, the actual project. Now, if you don't actually render it out, you will have to copy the blur mo curves onto each individual mask and also the character overlay. And that isn't really that much fun. So, uh, it is just a whole lot easier to actually do it like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and write, uh, just import it just like so. I'm going to go ahead and mute all of these tracks and just drag it underneath. I'm also going to go ahead and delete the soundtrack. So I'm also, I'm just going to drag these above because why not? And now we have this. So now what we want to do is just go into a video face time and search for blur more curves. Just go and drag that on to the uh, the actual video layer right here. So now just go ahead and keyframe the Z distance. Go ahead and just make a keyframe there. Go ahead and like sort of make a keyframe here, I would say. Sort of here. Like you set that to 0, 0,9. Go ahead and set this right here to like 0, 0,75. 0, 0,75. Like so. And then go to the end and set it to 1. Now, obviously, it will not look great. <laughs> it won't look great at all. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to interpolate these. And we also want to change the center. So the center should be a bit to the right of the character. It should be sort of like that. Uh, sort of like there. Uh, so now if we go and play this back, it obviously will not look amazing. Uh, as you can see, it looks sort of like that. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to set this to a, uh, a, a smooth fade. And then we'll set this to a fast fade and set that to a slow fade. 
and now this obviously will not make it look a whole lot better but it you know it, it's still f like it's it's not amazing still it really is not amazing but there's not much else you can do vegas i've come to realize in the last couple of weeks is just not an amazing uh, editing software for these advanced effects uh, so if you are actually planning on adding these effects to your videos to your montages i would recommend that you switch to after effects but yeah that's really about it that's all you can do in in vegas like i don't know there, there are, there's going to be a free impact in the description if you don't have an impact for that and yeah that is about it so, so thank you guys so much for watching today's video if you enjoyed it, like down below come subscribe i'll thank you and i'll see you guys in a couple days and peace